Well this is the paint I'm planning to use. I've got three tins of Hammerite. I've got a half a tin of dark blue, uh, smooth dark green and smooth black. Uh, these were acquired from somebody who, who were throwing them out, so I, being a scrimper I had them. So I'm planning to use these. I should probably use the dark blue underneath where it doesn't show and I'll keep the dark green for the bits on the outside that do show. So hopefully using those three I should have enough to do the whole trolley. Well I've got my main frame outside ready for painting. It's a lovely sunny afternoon. It was quite foggy and damp this morning and I wondered if I'd be able to do it. Anyway, I've got it on these trestles. It's going to be tricky to do. Uh, this is the right way up but most of the ironwork here won't show because it'd be covered with the boards for the trailer. So what I thought I'd do is put some paint around here, mainly to protect it from, the, from any further rust in. And once I've done this bit, I can turn it upside down and then do the bottom. But it's going to be a bit tricky because it is quite heavy. I'm going to be using this blue hammer right for this part because it's not going to show anyway. I'm saving the black for the parts that will show because I've got to put another coat on. So I'm going to put a coat of this blue on first and see how I get on. I've only got half a tin. I'm not going to show you errors of painting. I'll just do a little bit as a token so you can see me putting a bit of paint on. I've got to show I'm doing something. I'm going to on the turntable for and hear it. Anyway, you can see I've put a little bit of paint on. What I'll do, I'll, I'll turn the camera off and get on with the painting and then I'll show you when I finished it. Well I've just finished putting a coat of Hammerite on the top of the trailer chassis and now I've got to do the underneath. It's going to be a bit awkward because somehow I'm going to have to turn this over. What I'm going to do, it dries quite quick this stuff, probably about an hour so what I might do is leave it for a little while to dry, touch dry, then I'll turn it over and do the underside then leave that an hour and then turn it back up and put another coat on top the bit that shows but um, I've got to get it done because I've got to get uh, the two coats on within a four hour time period and of course it gets dark early tonight so I'll have to get on with it I painted the turntable part it was a bit tricky to do actually what I've done I rigged it up on an old computer plastic turntable with a pot of paint so I did the underside bit well actually it's the top side really because I got it upside down, the top side bit um, and then put it on the painting on this bearing surface which won't be painted, turned it up obviously and now I can turn it round and I've actually painted it, it's a bit fiddly, there's so many surfaces to do I've put one coat of hammerite on and it, it'll have to have another coat but I've got to wait for this one to become a bit drier it must be done within four hours well the turntable is nearly dry now, when I say nearly dry it's touch dry so I'm going to leave it a little bit longer then I'm going to try and shove another coat of paint on top and get that done. Meanwhile I've painted the handle black and I've got that hanging outside. Uh, I've got to wait for a little while and then I'll give that another coat of paint and that'll be the handle done. Well here we go. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hang on a minute, that was blue and he's painting on green. And you'd be quite right, I am painting on green. The reason is that I haven't got enough blue and I've got another tin of green. It's the same type of paint, it's Finnegan's Hammerite. So I reason that if I put the blue on underneath and save the green, I could use the green as a top coat which would go on easier. So that's the reason I'm doing it green and it doesn't matter anyway. So it is logical. I could have gone and bought some more paint I suppose, but I'm a scrimper. I don't buy paint when I've got it given me free, do I? I've been rushing to get two coats of paint on before the sun goes down because you've got to do it within this sort of four hour time zone otherwise you've got to wait six weeks to put another coat on so hopefully it'll turn out all right. Whether this is visible or not in the bright sunshine but that's the turntable part where the front wheels go on. I've painted that, that's had two coats on, dark blue and dark green and down here you'll see one of the brackets that's also been painted that's had two coats of green on there's eight of those all together now it's just a case of waiting and hoping they'll get dry before nightfall so they can put them inside oh it's another nice sunny afternoon and I'm about to reassemble the trailer 
So without further ado, let's get on with it. First thing I'm going to do is spread some grease around the turntable plate. I'm not sure what sort of grease to use, so I've chosen one that's not too thick. I did initially think I would put water pump grease, which is rather thick on it. And then I thought, well, I don't want it too thin, so I found one that's in between, so I'm going to spread that around. I've no idea if this is the right thing, but I'm sure it'll make it run smoother. Can't do any harm anyway, can it? It's got to be better than a dry surface. I'll put plenty on, I've got plenty of it. It looks almost like ice in a cake, isn't it? Lovely jubbly. I'll put a bit round the shaft as well. Right, we'll get the turntable and show it on and see what it's like. It's quite heavy this part is, now the axle's fitted on. There we go. Oh, lovely. Like a job in a town, that is. Now all I've got to do is find the washer to go on there, the washer to fit on there, and the cotter pin to go through it. Well, I'll put a couple of washers on, I think, just to be on the safe side. Put that one on first. Put an extra one on, a thicker one. I've got another cotter pin out of my box of cotter pins. Slightly longer than the one that was on there, but it'll do the job all right. Don't want the trolley coming off, do we? Oh, that seems all right. Now I've got a bit of a dilemma here. Now you see the original wheels, this is an old one here, one of the originals. For bearings, it just had a phosphor bronze bush in it, which fitted over the shaft rather loosely. And obviously they've worn out and that do tend to wear the shaft as well. There is some wear on the shaft. The problem is, well, it's not really a problem, but it's a dilemma. The new wheels have got two nice ball bearings in them, one each side. The object is, really, you don't want the ball bearing to spin on the shaft. You want the ball bearing to fit snugly on the shaft, but at the same time, so it allows the wheel to ro rotate nicely in the bearing, like so. But if the problem is that these are dirty and greasy and quite tight, if I make them too loose, there's a danger the bearing will spin on the shaft, and then, as well as not making it so smooth, it will tend to wear the shaft even more. So, it's really, you need them quite tight on the shaft. The problem is, if you have them too tight, then you can't get the blooming things off if you ever need to take the wheel off. It is nice to be able to take the wheel off occasionally if you're going to do something or say you want to mend the puncher. Uh, obviously it's going to be better to just take the wheel off. So the dilemma is, do I make them tight or do I keep them quite slack? I, I might just, I think what I'm going to do is get some spirits and clean some of this grease and grime off and just give it a little bit of wire brushing just to clean it up a bit because I think, to be honest, I'd rather have them loose so they come on and off because they are a bit tight at the moment. I've tried one on and it is quite a tight fit. Now I've cleaned the muck off the shaft, you can see the ridges on here. There's a distinct ridge in here and here where the bearing in the wheel has worn the shaft away the old wheel. I suppose it's not unreasonable for 70 years of use. These front wheels are going on a lot easier than the back ones and they're simply held on by a strong collar actually with a bolt through it. Quite a well made strong thing. Better than a hole with a cotter pin like they use today. Just tighten the bolt up on the shaft and that's the job done. What could be simpler? At least that'd be easy to take off again in the future if I need to. The other thing I didn't mention was that I need to make a, a towing bracket to fit on here so that I can tow it with my garden tractor. I've got a piece of heavy duty iron here that I found out in my stock of scrap and I think I can make use of that somehow. So what I can do is move it along, put two holes in it, two bolts probably, and uh, I can fashion something out of this hopefully. One trolley finished. When I say finished, finished apart from the woodwork, all the metal work's done. I think it looks quite good actually and it pulls along nicely. Uh, next week I should start doing the woodwork but I'm going to have a rest now over the weekend. Bye for now. We're on the subject of trolleys. This is another of my little trolleys. This one was in a house a gentleman had passed away in the village, had no relatives and they sold off the proceeds for charity and this little trolley was rusting away in the garden and I thought it looked, had possibilities. It didn't have any sides or anything or any back, it was just a basic trolley with a, a board on the on the top so uh, I brought it home and decided to do it up but when I bought it it didn't have a handle or anything it just had the brackets there loose and I managed to fashion up a hand a piece of ash I had kicking about in the shed when I bought the trolley it was basically like this well it wasn't in such good condition 
So what I've done, I've made it a little bit wider, I've fitted some extra pieces of wood on here, and I've made up some brackets, you can see the ones on the back, so I could fit sides and a back onto it. I've got the sides down here, this is one of the sides, and all it does, it just fits, it fits in there, so you can remove them if you want to. Might be a bit heat robbing some, but it does the job. The, uh, these metal bars here, sort of U bent into a U shape, they are actually um, suspension pieces off old washing machines. When we used to uh, sell washing machines, the, because the tub was sprung, they used to heat these metal bars, were bolted on to keep it all in place when they're in transit. Nowadays they put cardboard and such like in them, but they used to use these metal bars and they were thrown away. Well, of course, being a scrimper, I didn't throw them away, I just kept them and I had quite a few of them. And they're ideal for this, I've just bolted them on there, look. Made up the brackets, so a bit of tin, again it was scrapped tin, and uh, it just fits in there. Just fits in nicely, so there we are. So that's my other little trolley, but it's not as good as the one I've just done up. It's only got two wheels, and of course you can't do much on it, uh, like work and everything, because it will tip over. If you put a weight on the end, it tips up like that, so it's a bit of a nuisance in some ways. It just seemed a shame to see it go for scrap, which is what would have happened if I hadn't have saved it. I quite like it actually, but it's not very practical to use, and it's quite awkward to pull along. I have actually towed it with my little garden tractor, but it's a bit of a fiddle. But I'm glad I got this other one I've done up, because I think it would be much better for what I need. Anyway, that's my other little trolley.